What if all of those keep happening in terms of the price fluctuations, but they've got, uh, maybe for want of words, say, adequate provision of maybe uh, also palliatives to ensure that the people don't feel this kind of pinch? Excellent. Now, the only palliative that I think that is required is not a hush, hush palliative measure. And 0.5 billion or 0.5 trillion naira is a tip in the iceberg considering the enormity of the problem we have in Nigeria as a palliative measure. The government, as, as far as I'm concerned, seem not to see the huge problem that this country is currently going through. We are in a deep, deep shit. When I say so, there is crisis in the health sector. There is crisis in the transport sector. Today, people cannot fly. And this is not PMS. This is aviation fuel. Is it the ordinary man that is, that, that is rioting or going on the streets because of aviation fuel? They don't fly. Is it the price that was thrown on PMA that affected scarcity of aviation fuel. So Nigeria should know that the problem is larger than what we think. And we need uncommon creativity. And we need a lot of resource persons who are not just academicians, but tested entrepreneurs to tell government what they need to know. And business will not cut corners. You speak the fact. You Figures think, do not think, lie. You think the economic uh, team can help in this? You see, government, economic team, content are all academicians. Okay? And when you are not using people that have practical knowledge to solve a country's problem that is the way it is, then we are digging for more trouble you in know, the future. One just wonders because um, if they just fixed or uh, give a range of price at which you could sell and not above 145 even though already in some cases is above that as we speak one wonders what will then happen if they fully deregulate because um, i heard some iocs have it as a policy that they will not have any uh what do they call it now fuel stations here or go into it fully if the prices are still regulated if we fully deregulate can we handle it now two things are involved when you fully deregulate, if you remember about 1977, there's what is called what was called cement amalda. When the government said people should bring in cement because the price of cement was going up, and there were over two to three hundred vessels of cement waiting to bat during General Gowan's era, and that was what gave birth to the establishment of Boham Cement. That was what gave birth to the establishment of Eagle Cement in Port Harcourt. And that was what gave birth to the establishment of, you know, terminals like Folawio. And today, government have myopically, you know, microscopically looked at few individuals to solve certain national problems. And I tell you, today, one of the reasons that Nigerians are heavily unemployed is because of activities of government thinking that when they support only few cabals that the country will be better off. There are many 1,001 investors that we know that are not really willing to come into Nigeria and invest because Nigeria do not have the policy that is sustainable that could sustain the economy when they bring in their investment to invest in Nigeria because they know there are people that government overprotects by granting huge amount of waivers and government would want to say hey because there is this policy we need so so amount of money that runs into billions and you go to a guy hey man bring in we're going to ban rice and you bring in all the rice they ban the rice they can't bring the rice they remove duty on the rice for him because government wants to spend 10 billion you know that, that that's where people like you should also uh, come in because uh this is not the first time uh, members of uh, different chambers of commerce and even business organizations have come up to bring such allegation, which is very key here. I think the government should pause and take a look into all of this, where there, there are allegations of waivers for individuals, few individuals, where there are, uh, you know, monopoly 
uh, of uh, import uh, or even access to forex for some people way above the others. So have you, for instance, been able to make a move for those under your chamber in Sapele to see that this whole observation gets to the government at the center? Well, I want to think and say that there are sufficient information right there in the presence of the government that there is huge amount of money that people have collected from the economy or robbed of duty that, ought to, that is due to government that government does not have. It runs into billions just as what they are investigating by EFCC. If government focus on that, government will recover so much money that has been paid as waivers to individuals. And again, my friend, Abdusaran Rabiu, wrote in a newspaper that there's an individual that got $2 billion allocation from CBN by processing from A for intangible goods. And they got the, the dollars and they moved it out of this country to buy equipment to establish factories in another country. Let me cut in because of time so that if we could typologize the analogy you've given, what should we do before we deregulate in the oil industry? First, the government need to have what is called strategic reserve, which is not negotiable. There are countries that I know within Africa that has strategic reserve for six months. Nigeria don't have strategic reserve for one week. And if Nigeria will have a strategic reserve on their own, and I think I want to engage Mr. President and the Minister of State one-on-one -on, -one on how to solve the problem of stability of petroleum you know price availability of the product and making all of this together putting a strategic res uh, reserve for one month is a thing that is very possible if the government do not know how to do it they should come to us we'll give the free service and I think this country will be better off for it. Mr. David Uweta is the president of Sapela Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for coming on this morning. I appreciate you, sir. Thank well, you. well, uh, so there you go. Uh, as you may have seen, your tweets were also being uh, scrolled on the screen as he went on. But uh, we do see a lot also here. But um, well, thank you for your comments. Um, this is what we draw the curtains today on the program as well. Thank you for watching. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Well, many thanks. I'm Suleiman Alede. Thank you so much. I'm Nell Taibri. See you again.